Hey guys, we've got news for Global for June 16th, and this week, um, joining me to discuss the Final Fantasy II news is Noelle, so you can say hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, so, this week, um, the schedule is a little bit shifted. Uh, this banner, once again, kind of like the Dragon Quest banner, was kind of like further away in the relative timeline on the JP server. Global is bringing it a little bit early. But that's pretty cool because it's a decent banner for a change of pace. Um, well, I guess the Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest banner was pretty good as well. But for these units, are you hyped for any of these, Noel? Yeah, actually, really. I mean, especially um, if I'm correct, there's actually an, a big upgrade for um, the protagonist of Final Fantasy XII. I forgot what his name was. Oh, uh, uh, Furion. Um, yeah, Furion gets his Chronicle yeah, Chronicle Fury. upgrade. Yeah, I heard from a Reddit post that he's like an element, elementless, non-elemental um, burst DPS similar to Cog. Uh, he, he can be, yeah, with like the, the full support, um, the full support Fury can be. We're jumping a little bit ahead, because uh, <laughs> uh, he's actually not on, he's actually not on Banner. He is, uh, he, but he, he is getting a Chronicle, that is true. Um, but this week it is uh, Emperor of Palamecia, Ricard and Wyvern, um, the awakenable three-star unit guy, uh, and a vision card i say and a vision card because in my opinion the vision card is the biggest deal of the entire banner this vision card is lit it is so good so it's one of the vision yeah, cards the that... nice. oh it's I'm amazing so, so um yeah. this is this is like the usual global exclusive uh monthly vision card it's on this banner this month and we're gonna skip directly to the card because I am extremely excited about this. When I saw this, I'm like, I've got to have this. So with... Same. What was that? Yeah, same for me. I was like, I got to have this card. It's just that lap because it's not that much currently for me. Oh, for sure. Um, it is definitely going to be expensive. It's it's 28000 uh for the whole step up. So you've got to do that to get the card. It's the only way um, for the card. But... uh. So with magical variants coming very soon, I've talked about it plenty of times in my videos. Um, you kind of want to force double hand on every mage if possible. Uh, and this card is going yeah. to make that significantly easier to do. So for units like, you know, Roberta, um, Yigni, and then even for units that are already double hand, like, you know, Oliveira, you know, Paws, uh, beach time Shinju. This card is just crazy, crazy good all around. So, what do you think about this card, Noel? Um, at first, after not seeing the specific VC level details, like at level one to level ten, I thought it was kind of underwhelming until I read actually the details. Actually, really, really freaking good. Like uh, the equipment, uh, the equipment magic is the TDH is just propels it very highly. That it's very valuable if you can get it. Oh yeah, it's it's crazy. So it's 120 base magic and 500 base MP. So already this blows away Olivera's card for all the MP scaling units like you know Aerith, Olivera himself, um, pretty much just those who that scale on MP. Uh, it's got yeah. another 100% MP and magic, 500 extra flat MP and magic, and then a bunch of killers, and then 50% MP reduction on cost. Now, this is actually relevant as well. So a lot of people are saying, you know, MP cost reduction is not that big a deal. Um, it has become a yeah. significantly bigger deal in JP lately because, like, the, the trend in lately in JP is giving support units excessively high MP cost. So like Nicole, Secura, yeah. Leftia, their their Amplify cost 1,000 MP per cast. The new Rosa in JP, her like Rays cost 800 MP per cast. The new Chrono Cross units in JP, they like drain their whole mana pool almost each turn. Uh, so yeah, MP reduction is becoming a really big deal in JP. So this is like super future proof. And then for Brave yeah, XPS units. Really good. Oh, it is, it is. 
And then for Brave XPS units only, the last one is exclusive to FFBE units. It's chain cap increase, not speed like the last version of this card. The old one, the, the Weaver card, was chain speed. That's not that good. This is chain cap increase and 200% double hand. So... It's really impressive. <laughs> like, I was pretty shocked, actually. It's got killers, high stats, chain cap boost, TDH. Well... The last one is a little, you know, restricted, but it's still very, very good. It is. It is definitely. I, I am for sure, for sure, getting this card. Um, I have I have skipped the last few of the global exclusive cards. I skipped the tank one. I skipped the Weaver card. Uh, I'm not skipping this one. <laughs> this one. This one definitely. I think caught... I skipped all of them too. Oh, I know this one. This one definitely caught my attention. But back to the banner itself. Um, <laughs> So we've got emperors. Oh, the chair meta. <laughs> oh, I know the chair. I can't stand the chair. I mean, I gotta be honest. I don't like the chair. I wish <laughs> I wish you didn't have it, but it, it is what, what it is. I love the chair. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so I've pretty much, I've pretty much uh, gone on and on about the card. So why don't you, Noel, tell me about Emperor of Palamecia? Well, he is the first line of J the JP breakers that was making a huge trend a couple of months ago. Um, they are basically breakers with a very huge um, elemental imperil at 160%. And that's their big, big thing. They don't have 90% breaks, but the imperils makes up more than what you need. Mm, yeah, he has um, his SLB is an 89% spirit break and 87% defense break. I think it's an 87% full break except for spirit, which is 89. Um, yeah. Yeah, so compared to our global breakers, uh, it's it's a little unfortunate. He's not that good of a breaker because, you know, global is all in for the, for the, for the 90%. Um, but he does have like, like yeah, said, it makes like uh, oh sorry. <laughs> oh no, you're fine. Um, but like just 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 like you mentioned, that 160 in peril is kind of where he is really good. But also, I, I, th I think you mentioned he does the 35 percent rod in peril as well, and that can be really good. Yeah, he. Um, I have to think. I forgot about the rod in peril, but that's a really good in peril as well to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the only other ones are um, Aerith and Realm, and you're probably not wanting to bring them these days to, like, Dark Visions. You know, Aerith, maybe. Yeah. She's still good, but, you know, definitely not Realm. But this can be your new breaker in Dark Visions for the Mage stages, and you can use, you know, double hand rods on all your mages if you've pulled one or two of them, and Emperor can be really good for that. Um, as far as Clash of Wills, seriously doubt it. Uh, and I, I will I will give a special mention to the I think it's the Rathalesia trial in JP where um, it kind of expects you to have one of those excessively high wind imperils and Emperor is kind of one of like the MVPs for that trial specifically it's not required um, but he does make it a lot easier. Yeah, that imperil is really really their big benefit. Mm -hmm. That's what you're gonna mainly bring them for. Pretty much, yeah. Unfortunately, that's kind of all you're going to bring him for because his damage is <laughs> really, really bad. Um, he doesn't really do anything else other than bad breaks and then big wind and peril with the rod and peril, and that's basically it. Like he's got some things like he can provoke and all, but then again, so can like Kenny Crow. So who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he utility beyond the imperil and the breaks is. Mm, net, negligible like mm -hmm. it's not an important part of his kit yeah it's, it's pretty pretty unfortunate um his tmr is extremely specialized it's a magical material for final fantasy 2 units only he is the only magical final fantasy 2 unit so no one's gonna use yeah. it for him uh his stmr yeah, is yeah his stmr is interesting it's a 110 magic chess piece with 100% LB damage, but it's only for breakers. And the only other magical breaker I can think of is Louise, and she wants her own STMR, because you're going to want to force double hand on Louise if you're still using her, which means she can't use her TMR anymore. And then Kuja yeah. in the future, but Kuja wants to use his own STMR, which is also a chess slot. 
So really, no one can use this except for himself. Yeah, it's it's a really good. I was actually um, a little disappointed that it was so restricted. Like I couldn't imagine one single magic breaker that could use this at all either. Yeah, because um, uh, like Frostblade Freavia, who you know could be maybe a good user. Um, her magic form is not the breaker form, so it's kind of like wrong form. <laughs> <laughs> so she can't even use it's it. So yeah. yeah. Oh well, oh well. And is it like Freavia bad or something? <laughs> I keep hearing she's bad. Uh, from well, a lot of players. Uh, Freavia has low damage. That's kind of the big, big complaint players have. Is Freavia's damage is very, very low, and magic variance is going to help, but it won't. It won't like fix the problem. It's still going to be low even after variance. Yeah. And now, um, Ricard and Weaver, so you want you want to give me the details on this one, Noel? Um, he is like a dragoon. He specialized in dragoon dragoon damage. Um, he has other like abilities that can damage as well. But I think his main thing is just dragoon damage, and that's about it. I think. Mm -hmm. That's that, um, that, that. That's pretty much it. Yeah, he's just a he's just a jumper, just like Kane. <laughs> he jumps. That's kind of it. Uh, yeah, it kind of is like disappointing if you stack him up against Roberta. Like, I still want to use Roberta, Roberta over him. Like, he just does damage, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Now that being said, um, his jump damage is very very high. He's going to be one of the highest. Bursters on global at the time of his release. Um, he actually out damages like Knight to Grandchild, etc. If you you know give him you know all the the best gear, uh, he is wind locked. Keep that in mind. So while Kane is like you know thunder and light, Ricard is just wind only. Uh, so you know very high oh. burster, but locked exclusively to wind. Now the huge I thing. What was oh. that? <laughs> I wonder if he's better than Kane in damage, or if they're on the same level. Uh, by by default, Ricard is slightly higher, but here comes the catch we're going to talk about right now. Um, well, his TMR is a 500 attack for uh, Final Fantasy II units only, um, so it's good for him. It's also good for Furion. Um, like you were mentioning, Fearing gets a lot better at this banner. That's definitely true, because Fearing gets a bunch more power-ups. This is one of them. Kind of like Squall gets power, more power from Laguna's uh, TMR. Yeah. Well, uh, Fearing gets more power from Ricard's TMR, but so does Ricard. But here's the big thing. The STMR and the Vision card on Ricard. This is, like, game-changing for all Dragoons in the game. It's 105 attack mm -hmm. power. It's a helm. It boosts um, jump damage, though. Jumps are modified by 50x modifier. I'm sorry, 30x modifier from the, uh, from the helm. And then we'll jump over here to the vision card. And then his vision card boosts the modifier of jumps by 40x. So with Ricard's STMR Ooh. and vision card, that's a 70x base modifier increase to every Dragoon that uses them. That is going to propel all the Dragoons in damage a huge amount. Now, if you give Kane these two items, that'll push Kane even higher than Ricard. Um, and Kane, once again, becomes the number one DPS on Global with these items, even surpassing okay. <laughs> even surpassing all the new Dragon Quest units, etc. Um, Whoa, I heard the Dragon Quest units is actually pretty powerful. I'm I'm shocked, actually. Mm -hmm. They are, but this dragoon gear makes um, makes the other other dragoons way way stronger than they are currently. It also works to boost up Sky. It boosts up Roberta. Um, the the other dragoons that are that could use this aren't really that relevant. I guess Reese can, can be a lot stronger, but other ones like um, Noctis, uh, Arden, they're just so far behind. This is not going to save them. But the good Dragoon is going to be a big boost. And I should special mention to Sky, because of the way she was designed as a global exclusive, uh, Sky double dips on jump modifiers. They apply twice to her, and she gets variants on them as well. So this is going to be a huge damage jump on Sky as well. Yes, yeah, really it's actually pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I actually found a recency recently that um, she double dips with the um, with the modifier boost to her jump attacks. I I didn't I I always thought of her at the, her finishing move in a brave shift form as one attack until I noticed it's actually two. So yeah, that's really important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for those of you that are fans of dragoons, I will say that. The, like, Dragoon power-up meta doesn't stop here. In the future, we'll be getting Kamari's STMR, the new Kamari, which boost jumps by another 50 times, or 50x modifier. Um, And then after that, we're going to be getting the Berserker Riku from Final Fantasy X2, which I know Noelle is hyped about. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Riku's STMR also works on Dragoons for another 50x modifier. That being said, the Riku STMR is locked to females only, so Ricard and Kane cannot benefit, but Sky and Roberta can yet again continue, continue, continue to get more and more powerful from all this Dragoon gear as it keeps coming out, and it'll just keep putting them higher and higher in damage, and it's it's awesome, especially because uh, Roberta is not elemental. So all this damage gain, uh, she can do it on any element, while the other Dragoons are all element locked, including Sky. Yeah, if they keep this up, actually, there won't be any spots for killers if they continue <laughs> with this pace. That is, that, that is kind, of the, kind of the funny thing, is it does start to get pretty heavy on your, um, your gearing. But that being said, all this Dragoon stuff does boost your jump damage. So you can see here, boost jump damage. Uh, boost jump damage. So even though you are trading out a lot of slots for all this stuff, you're you're mostly trading out your jump damage stuff anyway that you were already wearing for the jump boost. So it still it still does leave a couple of slots open for killers. So you know. Yeah, start to start to get all of the whale out SDMRs mm-hmm. yeah, to so really optimize the units. Exactly. Yeah. That actually is a good warning. So for anyone tempted by what I'm explaining to you, keep in mind, it is going to be expensive to pull every single piece of the puzzle. You're going to need to pull Ricard, Kamari, Riku, and these are all new vision units. So it's going to be expensive if you're going for like the ultimate Dragoon. But um, if you do, the payoff is pretty strong. Yeah, I think it'll out damage if you, um, a Dragoon mod- modifier boost instead of a killer, you know, build. I think the modifier boost will edge out um, the killers that you would have been p- put in the slots in their materials and equipment slots. Mm-hmm. And then Guy, yep. the three star. So this is your bonus unit for the week. Uh- <laughs> pretty in it <laughs> yeah I, I basically have no idea what this guy does i know he's like a he's like a physical tank or something but i don't know he's it, it's a three-star new visions awakening you're not going to use him other than for the bonus unit <laughs> I actually do use him. <laughs> Hopefully. he's like i think it's a defense i think he scales off of defense on his attacks i don't know if he's like a really good tank, but he does damage, if that's good enough, I guess, I suppose. <laughs> it could be. Hopefully players have been saving their guys, like I told you guys a few weeks ago. Um, you know, lock all your guys you get during pulls. You know, Guy, Seymour, Vayne, all these upcoming low-tier units that are getting New Visions Awakenings. Make sure you save your copies so you can get, like, EX2 or EX3 for your farming mm-hmm. event. And yeah, this is... sometimes I accidentally <laughs> fuse them into one single unit, and I'm like, oh, crud, I forgot. Whoops. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, now guys, STMR is actually really good. Um, it's for Final Fantasy II units only. It'll give uh, 500 flat attack, uh, which is obviously very, very important for, um, for Furion, for Ricard. If you pull him, they're definitely going to want this. It doesn't stack. So keep that in mind. Only one of those will work. But uh, for all units, it's a 75% human killer on the accessory slot. And that does stack. So uh, it's a really good accessory. So you definitely want to get multiple copies of this. So don't fuse all your guys to EX3. I recommend you make multiple copies of this accessory. I would say make as many as four if you can. Or maybe more than that. Uh, It's really good. Because, you know, uh, this is going to be more long-term value than... A slightly higher bonus uh, unit 
for the guy for the farming event. So recommend yeah. recommend you make a bunch of those. And I kind of I kind of browsed over it briefly, but we'll go back to Emperor's card. Uh, Emperor's card is kind of whatever. It's basically the same as Renoa's card, but for Final Fantasy yeah. two for Final Fantasy two units. It's you know the the very copy paste format. Hundred magic, fifty magic, twenty five LB, and five hundred for FF two only, which is for Emperor only, basically. Yeah, I, this, it's just a 500 magic stat. It's the only important thing, really. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But if you want 500 magic, we got this down here. <laughs> yeah. When he, I was actually saving up for anniversary, but when I saw this card, I was like, oh, I already blew all my lapis on Kaido because he looked fabulous, but this card really is good looking. Plus, it's actually pretty good too i know that's the, that's that's kind of the crunch with anniversary is you had like the amazing banner with kaito you just had two weeks of dragon quest and the dragon quest units are pretty good i decided to not pull on them but they're still pretty good Same. you've you've now got um this amazing card and then like a week or two more you've got anniversary so yeah, if you don't have a big savings or if you're not a spender, then you kind of got to pick and choose between all these amazing options and hopefully you make the right you make the right choice, but um a lot of good stuff recently and a, and some more good stuff coming very soon. So pretty pretty hard hard to keep yeah. up. Yeah, I think if um this banner overlaps a little with the anniversary news, then you can kind of um um Kind of see which one is more value for you and then you pick off of the value percentage of each banner mm -hmm. and the event is a mog king you're gonna get a free copy of guy you're gonna get some some gear i'm not gonna go over it too much because this is just you know the usual event stuff like it's fine but it's not great uh you'll get a grand disability that you can equip the people it gives like hellfire it's it's interesting but not like that powerful so whatever uh yeah and then the EX stage is against the uh, against Emperor. Um, unfortunately, they are once again hiding the EX battle in the bottom of the news with no information. But uh, yeah, you know, mystery crystal, etc., kill in a few turns. It's not that hard, but uh, and it's also I think it is not locked to Final. I can't remember if it's locked to Final Fantasy two or not. I don't think it is. I think I think you can take anything. In which case, you know, take your favorite unit, blow it up in one turn, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, I think so too. I don't think I remember them locking two units either. But mm. I might be wrong, though. Eh. We'll see. And then the Chronicle Battle is Captain. This is the farm version, super easy. Uh, the armor is pretty terrible. And then the bow. This is what, this, this, this is what you were talking about, Noel, where Fearion gets his power. So Fearion is getting 500 flat attack from um, Ricard's TMR, 500 flat attack from Guy's STMR. And then 1,000 flat attack from his Chronicle weapon and an extra 50% LB damage from his Chronicle. So all this combined, plus Furion's crowns we got previously, plus Furion's EX2 and EX3 buffs. Um, yes, Furion becomes a pretty strong finisher with the kind of disclaimer that he really, really wants... Um, uh, what's her name? Return Fina on the party for his ultimate damage because he can't really do his full power-up plus his own bow and peril because the timing doesn't really work out. He kind of needs an external bow and peril, which Return Fina provides very handily. So. <laughs> I mean, I don't think a lot of people pulled for Fina, and now people got Kaido. <laughs> I think it does an Omnium Peril, but it, it isn't that high as Fina's, if I'm correct. Uh, Kaito's Imperil is only, his Omnium Peril is only available in Clash of Wills. Um, yeah, so you're probably not gonna bring oh, no. you're probably not gonna bring Furion to Clash of Wills. Now Furion can do most weapon imperils, including a bow imperil, but uh, it's in it's in his wrong form. His good damage is his base form, his shift form is the bow imperil, and with the, the way the cooldowns and all that and the, the modifier boost and all work, you can't really use his own bow imperil plus his bursting LB with all the all the cooldowns lining up. It just, it just, it just won't work out. All the modifier boost lining up. So that's why he kind of needs Fina on the party to, to use Furion. Yeah. I don't think Fina does any good damage herself, does she? Oh, Return Fina? No, no. She, she's pure support. She does zero damage. She's she totally support. 
<laughs> yeah. And we've got the beginnings of the anniversary events. So a very special guest returns. We're going to be fighting Hiroki and the Vortex. Um, if 100 and... Oh, I'll, oh, if a million people clear him, we will get all the rewards. Um, the interesting Ooh. one, though, is the 600,000 clears for the treasured memorial ring. So pretty, pretty low stats on the item itself. But it does have an active that gives um, immunity to ailments, and uh, it fills morale at the start of the battle. So that's pretty cool. The ability is pretty decent. I just kind of wish that the stats were at least mediocre. Mm. I mean, the HP and MP is. Mm. I'm actually. I guess. Nice. Yeah, I'm actually reading. I'm actually reading this a little bit closer. Uh, so this is for one turn, but this fills morale gauge at the beginning of battle. So that's only like a one time per fight, the way I'm reading it. Is that going to be yeah. like a really huge morale gain? Because otherwise, if it's like a small percentage, what's the point? Is this going to be like a 20% morale gain or something if it's on turn one? That could be really interesting. Yeah, that will make the accessory worthwhile in my opinion. If it's like a one, like just a little smidget, then I don't see myself equipping this on any unit at all. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit a little bit strange. I'm reading right here. There will not be any hints for the bosses above. So is he <laughs> gonna, is he going to be like an actual trial or something? Because in the previous years, like you go in there and turn one OGKM, it was not really a fight. But they're making it sound like it's going to be a serious fight. <laughs> Oh, oh my, if it's like that, I think it was in 2018 or 19, I'm not sure, but you have selected the units and you need to beat this big boss and it was a little difficult. If it's like that, I actually kind of like this. Oh, you but mean the, uh, like, the, the Telfusanas event? Yeah, that one. Oh yeah, that was, that was, that was definitely really fun. If it's and like that, then... Yeah, and then the last thing. Um, so the maintenance this week is going to be ten hours, and if you know from past experiences, the ten hour maintenances basically mean it is time for a client update, and if it means it's time for a client update on uh, on June, which we know was announced to be magic variants, you can kind of basically hear and like sort of confirm that magic variants is coming this week because this is the big client update for the uh, Brave XPS. So, are you hyped for Magic Variants, Noelle? Yeah, I'm really excited because there was one fan-made unit that I really wanted to sign, wanted to shine and be really good. It was Yigni. He was pretty bad in my opinion. And now he can dish out pretty decent damage. Oh yeah, Yigni um, with magic variants in Clash of Wills and with uh, a little bit of help to go double hand, um, Yigni can be really good, really good in Clash of Wills. Yeah, you're really making it so tempting to pull the card. I mean, I, I, really... I, I, I am just blown away by this card and I'm so happy the card is also on the Ricard banner because I, I, I wanted Ricard anyway for the Dragoon power-ups because that's the kind of thing I love. I love that kind of like that kind of like system where you can use all kind of special power-ups on one unit and make them really good. Um, so I was really looking forward to that anyway, and now I get a good card in the process. So for me, this this is this is going to be a fun week. I will be yeah, definitely. Sounds I will pretty be, good. I will be grabbing that card. But that's pretty much it for the week. We've got one more week of Vision World, and for those of you that are, have not capped Hadlar yet, um, Magic Variants should be this week so you know if you're using like uh dragon knight baran or pop etc on your team your damage will go up by about 50 percent for those units um against hadlar so, may so maybe that'll help you damage cap 50 percent. that's a lot that's mm. a lot oh yeah magic variance is a really big deal for me we, we, we've been asking for it for years and years it is finally here yeah, I can can already think back of all of the weapon system changes from like two D 
dual wield and true double hand and I think most of the sore spots was the magic magic damage dealers, if I'm correct. Mm hmm Yeah. Yep. This is pretty good. Oh yeah. But that's pretty much it for the week, so thanks for joining me, Noelle. Thank you too for bringing me on to the to the show. <laughs> All right, so I will see you guys for the Final Fantasy II stuff on Thursday. Later. Bye.